Hey what's up guys, Hedrimas here. So, so today they did a few big changes to mainly Enhancement Shaman. They did one big change to Elemental Shaman, but mainly Enhancement Shaman. And I'm gonna go over those right now, because they're pretty significant. So this is the post that Blizzard made about all the changes they did to Enhancement Shaman and why they did it. Let's go over it. For Enhancement Shaman, several numerical changes have been made to the base abilities to emphasize some abilities that aren't performing as well as intended. And several adjustments have also been made to talents to help keep the value of talents on the same row much closer. So some time ago we made a change to reduce the effectiveness of all Maelstrom weapon spenders by 50%, which makes sense because now... They made the Maelstrom buff uh, increase the damage or healing of these abilities by 20% per stack of the buff. So they reduce the damage by 50%, then you get 5 stacks of a 20% buff, doubles the damage, it's the same number. So this reduction has been reduced from fi minus 50% to minus 35%, which should increase the value and priority of your Maelstrom weapon spending abilities. Additionally, healing surge is no longer affected by this minus 35% value anymore, but still remains the increased healing effectiveness and reduced cast time if you use the ability with st uh, stacks of Maelstrom Weapon. So basically, um, Healing Surge is a lot stronger, if I uh, read it correctly. Now this is a big one. Feral Spirits has been a damage cooldown for enhancement for many years, but has been slowly pushed down to be less effective relative to your other abilities. So in this build, we've increased the attack power scaling of Feral Spirits by 250% to make it feel more impactful to use as a DPS cooldown. So what this means, if I understand correctly, is that the damage of the Feral Spirits, like the physical, the melee component, is going to go up by 2.5 times. If I recall correctly, the initial scaling was 60% of the player's attack power for the wolves. So that means now it would be at 150% of the player's attack power. So I can't show you the difference with the old one, but if I pop it here and I attack with melee attacks as well. You see my Spirit Wolves is doing... Okay, I'm doing more because I get all these procs. Oh, actually, it counts it up. Okay, so here, by just auto-attacking, my Spirit Wolves are doing more DPS than I am. So that's a pretty pretty good change, because it increases our burst. It doesn't... I don't know if it's enough, because we still have the issue where um, Elemental Spirits is pure RNG-based. So I don't, I don't think it's enough. I think we need a bit more, but it's, you know, increasing the damage by two and a half times is pretty significant overall, so... I'm happy. Then, several towns have had some numeric tweaks, uh, number tweaks. Forceful winds, Wind Fury damage bonus per stack has been reduced from 50% to 35%. That's this talent, which stacks up to 5 times. So 5 times 50%, that was 250% increase, which was pretty strong. The reason why they nerfed it most likely is because they recently increased the damage of Wind Fury by a lot. Let's see if I can find it. Should be in the passives here. Uh... Well, this, uh, 222 physical damage if it procs, which it was, I think, even higher before, but then they nerfed it because people were using a legendary with it and it was just two, two bonkers. But basically, they buffed Twin Fury damage, they nerfed Forceful Winds. I think, in the end, it probably comes out still better than the old Wind Fury weapon damage. But yeah, I, I don't think... You have to look into this too much because if you compare it to life right now, I think Wind Fury will do more damage still. Then Ice Strike damage has been increased by 75%. That's nice because honestly, Ice Strike felt so useless to me. So here it does 1,358 damage. Storm Strike does 1,494 damage. So now it's it actually feels like a button that's worth pressing because before the button didn't really do much damage. It resets your shocks, but it wasn't enough to make it feel good. Basically. You would rather press anything else than Ice Strike and only use Ice Strike if you really had to in a lot of situations. So I think this is a good change. I don't know if I like the change or like if I am a fan of Ice Strike yet, but you know. Then Lashing Flames. Lashing Flames has had a, has has had its debuff duration increased from 12 seconds to 20 seconds. This is actually huge because if you look at the cooldown of Lava Lash, the cooldown is 11 seconds. And there were some bosses, especially bosses where you have two targets, where you're focusing on two targets or three targets. You could only really keep Lashing Flames up on one target. Because it lasted 12 seconds and, you know, cooldown on Lava Lash. But, with this change, if you have enough haste, you can pretty much, on two targets, have your Flame Shock do double damage. On both targets, instead of only on one. Which is pretty significant, I would say. 
actually think this is way more significant than some people might think. Especially on Cleave fights, but we're gonna have to see how it plays out because they're changing a lot of talents, so everything is changing around a little bit. Then Hot Hand now also resets resa the cooldown of Lavalash when a talent activates. That's good because it felt really bad, like it would trigger. And then I can't remember 100% sure, but um, I think if the cooldown of Lavalash was 10 seconds, don't quote me on this, I think that's how it worked. But if it was 10 seconds and used Lava Lash and then Hot Hand procced, I'm not 100% sure, but it's possible that it might have still been waiting for 10 seconds before you can press Lava Lash again. When I think about it, I think I might actually be wrong about this because it's been a while since I used this on the beta. But even if it uh, if this wasn't the case, it still sucked. Like if it reduced it by 75% the cooldown and it was 10 seconds, and you just pressed it and then it triggered, you still have to wait for two and a half seconds, which doesn't feel good considering this uh, increases the damage of Lava Lash by 100% and it only lasts 8 seconds, which means you would have lost like one third of the buff uh, pretty much because unlucky, I guess. Then Elemental Blast has had its damage increased by 25% for Enhancement Shaman. Now, 25% it's not that much, but if you look at it, it's still decent, I guess. If you look at the damage, it's 1357 damage. Storm Strike is 1,494 damage. So, it is slightly worse, but when you think about it, it's a spell. So, if we build some Maelstrom stacks... Uh, I had to recreate this character, so I don't have all my keybinds set up yet, yet, but... Okay, if we get 5 stacks... I don't know if that thing worked there, if it actually reset, I didn't, didn't pay attention. Come on, give me 5 stacks. Okay, 5 stacks. Uh, so now, 2714 damage. And the Storm Strike is 1494 damage. So it's pretty damn good, I would say. Like, damage number wise. Now, the question is will it compete with Forceful Winds and Lashing Flames? Because uh, Lashing Flames is pretty damn good, and Forceful Winds on AoE is pretty damn good. Maybe we're gonna end up Forceful Winds is for AoE. Lashing Flames is for like two uh, mob cleaves and Elemental Blast is for single target. It's, uh, yeah, we're not, sh I'm not sure yet, but if I recall correctly, um, Elemental Blast was actually already a viable option with certain talents. So now that they buffed it by 25%, I'm pretty sure uh, Elemental Blast will see some play somewhere. Now, Hellstorm bonus damage to Frost Shock has been reduced from 35% to 15%. This is huge because it's a nerf. It's nearly nerfed by half, or like it's nerfed by more than half, basically. So 20% down, which means uh, the 5 stacks is now 75% increased damage, instead of... How much was it before? Uh, 175? That's pretty significant. So if I would pick Hailstorm here, obviously I won't be able to show you um, the previous damage again, because, well... It changed already. So let's get to 5 stacks of Maelstrom weapon uh, here. Okay, let's do an ability. And now the damage is increased by 75% only, which is a massive difference from 175%. So if we cast it now, it says 940 damage. So yeah, in general, Hailstrom a lot worse, but we'll have to see what it, what it uh, looks like later on because they're trying to get these closer together. So we will need simulations for this to really find out or like some real like calculations to find out which one is the strongest now. Uh, and then the final one, Fire Nova's damage has been increased by 75%, which is pretty significant. Now, if you combine this with the Ice Strike buff, I think they are trying to get us to play Fire Nova. They still didn't give us a way to spread Flame Shock, so I don't see it as like, you know, I, I, I still don't think Fire Nova is going to be fun. It's going to be more fun because it's going to hit harder. But it still has the problems. I can see why they don't want to give us flame shock spread because it will probably be way too strong. But honestly, if the choice is, you know, if they can't make this ability fun, if the only way for them to make it, make us use it, is to make it so strong that we have to use it, like that's not really fun, you know? But yeah, like I said, they buffed Ice Strike as well. So if you would go Ice Strike together with Fire Nova, you could get a lot more flame shocks out so 
uh, let's see. Oh yeah, then again, you also have the problem of Fire Nova being 14 seconds cooldown, but you know, that's uh, an issue by itself. It's not really an issue, it's just, yeah. Uh, so we could Flame Shock here, Ice Strike, Flame Shock, and now let's do Fire Nova. And now these are not stacked completely, like this one probably won't hit one on the left, and this one probably won't hit one on the right. But it did 3.5k damage. If I would do one Storm Strike, I'm probably gonna get some procs, whatever. 1.1k damage. So it does do damage. It does, of course, scale with the more flame shocks you have up, the more enemies there are. So, you know, it, it can actually be a very strong option. Uh, let's actually compare. This is a 14 second cooldown. Let's compare how much a Hailstorm would do on these four targets now. Okay. One hailstorm. Uh, okay, it didn't even hit the last one, and that one crit. So, see, it, Fro Frost Shock still hit harder. Now, of course, the one thing you have to take into consideration when you go hailstorm, you don't apply flame shocks. You spend all your shocks on Frost Shocks, and Flame Shock actually does a quite significant amount of damage. So you can't just compare the damage, like when you do a dungeon, for example, and you do one with hailstorm. One with Fire Nova, you can't compare the damage of how much your Frost Shocks did and how much your Fire Nova did. Because if you do that, you're just uh, taking out of the equation the fact that you uh, do damage with Flame Shock. And Flame Shock is quite significant. So, you know, we're gonna have to, again, simulate this, see what's stronger. Then Elemental Assault is also a pretty damn strong option. So we might just end up with Fire Nova being on, like, from a certain amount of targets that Fire Nova would be better than Hailstorm. And then Hailstorm is the medium option for like medium AoE. Then Elemental Assault would be the single target option. But we'll have to see how it pans out because nothing is certain without simulations. Then uh, one thing I forgot to mention. I think they buffed, uh, they didn't buff, they fixed the Feral Spirits to actually give their fire buff properly because there were a few new fire spells such as fire nova and the fire wolves wouldn't actually buff fire nova but now they do from what i read in some comments but so that that's mainly just a bug fix that's not really a new feature but it's important to know then one uh big it's not big it's not massive uh change is that for fate transfusion you now generate three maelstrom weapon charges instead of one well maelstrom weapon charge I guess this is way better. I still don't think I want to go for uh, Fate Transfusion. Uh, if I compare the other Covenant abilities, but I guess we'll find out. Then one other one, uh, the Conduit for Fate Transfusion. Before it would reduce the cast time and increase the damage, which I think this was a problem in PvP because they, they say here um, it was becoming difficult to to counter effectively, so this is probably PvP. So what they did is they made the conduit reduce the cooldown of Fate Transfusion. The minimum value is 25 seconds, the maximum value is 40 seconds. Now I update the enhancement graph here I have for the calculation of the Night Fate DPS abilities. Don't look at the elemental one, this one is not updated yet. But this is one target, and now Night Fate with 25 seconds reduced uh, cooldown on the ability. Uh, at 15% mastery it actually pulls ahead of the Kyrian one with the conduit but if we go to two targets um, let's see if we go to two targets both other abilities are better again than Night Fae so on single target Night Fae might be the best option but it's not so far ahead so I would say that most likely for enhancement the Kyrian one will actually be the best one again or the Ventir one either or because there's something interesting that they did to Ventir. Like if you look at Elemental Ventir doing this much damage, you can forget about this because they actually removed this and can delete this. So now, if you want to play both Ele Enhancement and Elemental, Kyrian on one and two targets looks better than anything else. Well, if you take into consideration that, you know, you want to play Elemental and Enhancement because Ventir with Conduit is only slightly above uh, Kirin here. But if we go to three targets, on three targets for enhancement, you know, Ventir is catching up a little bit. So I think in the end, we'll probably end up with um, K 
Valkyrian again for enhancements, but I think we'll have to see. Now, anyway, that was it for the changes. Uh, if you have any questions about the changes, just message me. Uh, I just went over these changes very quickly, so I might have missed something. I don't think I did, but if I did, please let me know and I'll reply to it in the comments. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.